but I'm also, I, I like to talk to uh, fathers. Like, like I like to talk about like being a dad, like right in the beginning of the podcast. But um, yeah. so you, you have two, two daughters, is it? I have, I have a, a one, one, two and a half year old daughter and one 10 month old son. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. So, cause I saw the picture of them in the snow and I was like, okay, is, is that a, well, like, you know, I couldn't uh, really tell. So, you know, they, they are almost identical. They're actually, so my wife and I had to go through IVF. Um, mm -hmm. so, you know, we, it was painstaking process and it's one of those things where, you know, they came from the same embryo group. So they're technically embryo twins. So they look almost identical. Um, but you know, yeah, it's, he's, he's starting to, he's thicker than she is. He, yeah. he she's got, he's like 25 pounds and she's 30 pounds. Jeez. That's crazy. He's just, he's <laughs> thick. He's hopefully he's going to be taller than, than my side of the family, but you know, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. So when you, when, you, when, you, um, when your wife got pregnant for the first time, like what was going through your mind of like, you know, <clears throat> this, like, was it a complete like shock at all? That was not, not, not meaning a shock. Was it like, you're like your whole mindset changed about like, okay, I need to think this way now compared mm -hmm. to what it was before. You know, I mean, being an older father, uh, first time father, you know, I think, you know, emotionally you're a little more prepared um i didn't know what the heck i was gonna do with a girl you know i mean yeah. like i'm like i'm a boy i i know what to do with a boy and i'll tell you when i had a boy i did not know what to do with him so it's like i i didn't know anything uh my wife is is probably like she will literally study topics she's read the crossfit rule book every year yep She's, she's that person that is like, she's so intelligent, so book smart. I don't know how she picked me, but like it, <laughs> it, she has all the answers and I'm just like, I'm just going to look to you and you tell me what I'm supposed to do because like, it's clearly sometimes not working, but mm -hmm. you know, she's uh she, she's kind of leads me in that department. Okay. So how much is does your daughter influence you? Because obviously like mine, like I'm wrapped around her finger. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, if she says something or like she wants to do something, I'm like, no. And then she like gets the, like the pouty face and I'm like, crap. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Go ahead. Is, is that same with you? Pretty standard. Yeah. It's uh, she'll look at me and go, please. Oh, geez. Like, Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So, um, with your with your son and daughter so mm -hmm. um you know are you tr are you trying to sh especially with your daughter are you trying to show her what it should be like to be a great dad and also you know i granted she's still younger but like later mm -hmm. on in life to be in like a great husband and or a great you know supporter for her well i, I think one of the things my wife said to me that really kind of hit home is that this i'm gonna be what she wants to look for in, in a man at some point, mm -hmm. you know, so how I treat my wife, how I go about my day, how I make time for them is, is so important that, you know, I, I think that, um, it, it made me be a lot more intentional with my time, you know? So like, I, I don't work out for three hours a day. I work out for an hour. It's usually at three 30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Um, but then I'm, I'm there when they wake up, you know, I, I, the hard thing for me right now is I travel for work. So um, I'm in Fort Wayne, Indiana right now. And um, being away from them is just awful. Like it makes uh, like, I feel like I'm missing everything. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and especially with the younger one, like you, like he's really young. So he's like doing things that you probably, he's doing a lot of firsts. Yeah. And so you're, you're almost like at the point of missing out. You're like, shit, this is, this sucks. My wife just sent me a video of him walking. I'm like, <sighs> Oh, that's, uh, yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's what almost happened to, um, my wife. So with my son, my father-in-law and I were, were there together, like in the same room, like just messing around with my son. And all of a sudden he just like got up and took like one step and we're like looking at each other. Like, did he just, did he, did he just walk? And so then we pushed him back a little bit and then he was like taking more and more steps. And then like when my wife came home, we're like, Hey, look at this. It's so she saw him walk. She's like, wait, I missed it. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, it wasn't our fault. I mean, he just decided he just wanted to do it. You got to shove him over. I mean, just, just <laughs> a little push. He never happened. I don't know what's going on. 
Yeah, uh, well, she saw her, she she saw her, her daughter walk for the first time, so I'm like, okay, that's kind of oh, we're kind of even a little now. bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so with the, with your busy schedule, like how like especially you being home, I know you say you work out really early. Like my, mm -hmm. I do it too. I work I work out at like four thirty in the morning. Mm -hmm. And like, so how do you schedule your time or block your time that you actually have enough time for, you know, your wife and your kids? So, um, my wife is, stays at home. Um, and, and our goal is to homeschool our kids. So, you know, that's, that's going to be something that's in, really important to us. Um, but I, I basically live every day by a schedule, like everything is structured. Um, you know, so, so from three 30 to five, I'm working out then from five to six 30, I'm, I'm usually working. And then I'll, I'll make breakfast for my daughter, wake her up, get her set up. You know, we're doing potty training right now. So it's, it's interesting. Good times. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I, I always want to bring her to school. So I bring her to, to, uh, uh, her school and, and that's like her and I's time. You know, and then <clears throat> I get home, I go home for lunch. I'll, I'll have lunch with my wife. I, I mean, I, I just, anytime that, and I've worked very hard to be within five miles of my house at all times. Mm -hmm. So I can always be home. I can, I can always make time. Um, and, and I think that's, that's been highly beneficial for, for my, my mental health is, is to be around my wife and my kids as much as possible. Got it. Got it. Yeah. I, I drive both of my kids to school. And then the one thing with my daughter, I do when I drop her off at like pre-K, I'll get her out of the car and I throw her up in the air and then I catch her and she mm. like, she is all, it's like literally for the past two years, we've been doing that. And she's mm. like, every time with like, we do like a donuts for dad kind of deal. She's like, I love it when I love it when dad throws me up in the air before yeah. I go to school. So and I'm like, it's, it's cool just like even like having her say that or like snuggling with you or even like my son, like snuggling with them. And they say like, I love you. It's just like, it's so awesome when you hear that. The first time my, my daughter said, I love you, dad. I was like floored, like tears. I walked into the, to the other room and I was just like crying. Like it, 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 they, it, I don't know what happens when you have kids, but it just, all the emotions come out. Mm-hmm. They, they just soften you up pretty much. Yeah. I'm, I mean, most people who know me wouldn't say that I'm soft, but like at home, I am very, very <laughs> soft. Snuggle soft. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, like, it's just cool. Just like having like you're laying on the couch and all of a sudden your kids just like lay right, right on top of you. And it's just like, yeah. okay, like that they feel safe and I feel, I, I feel at peace and it feels comfortable. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's a good, good thing to have kids. Absolutely. Are you, are you looking to have any more at all or, or, or just like you're two and done? Uh, I mean, I'm good with, I'm good with two. Um, we would have to go through the process again, which I'm, you know, I, we, we got so lucky, you know, the IVF is not a guarantee. It's, it's, no. you know, when we got two out of it and it, I just, I, I feel like I'm tempting fate and, and the failure of it is, is honestly scarier to me like say it doesn't work you know what happens then like i don't i don't have i don't have to worry about that right now because it worked twice mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean it, in my mind i'm done um but you know my wife is constantly trying to talk me into more so <laughs> and i'm like and i'm 41 do i really need more kids i don't think so now I, I told my wife, I'm like, once, once I hit 40, like, like no more. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm 44 and I'm like, I can't, I can't imagine having kids like over 40. Like, it's just, I just, I don't think I could do it. It's, uh, you start to think about like, all right, when he turns 21, I'm going to be 63. Awesome. Yeah. Like, that's just, it, it feels old. Now, obviously like we take care of ourselves and, you know, um, we try to live as, as clean as possible and as healthy as possible, but at 65 is still 63 is still 63. I mean, it's just not everyone. Like I, I was on a MFC podcast earlier today with Ron Ortiz. Mm -hmm. He's 60. That dude doesn't look like 60. Like, no, not at there's all. There's not many people like Ron out there, you know? So it's like, what am I going to look like? I'm, I'm short and stubby. I mean, it's not going to be pretty. So, you know, 
I don't know. 